this uh, excuse that we don't have money. Uh, they spend <laughs> millions of dollars, millions of rupees on the defense and others. And education, which is a basic need of the student, they do a, or, all kind of uh, excuses. This contractualization of the education, as again the permanent teacher earlier, the contractualization mm -hmm. of education has brought an uncertainty among the teacher. Their desire to teach has been reduced and the quality has affected. So I think higher education and school education is in, I would say, is in crisis as a matter of fact. If you compare what is happening during the last 10 years and earlier to that, the major change that has been brought is that earlier we had a decentralized system of uh, test whereby all India consideration were, were also taken into account. But the unique feature of what has happened during the last couple of years, after, particularly after declaration of new education policy 2020, is that there has been a centralization of admission policy and effort to bring the uniformity in examination, in questions. Hello and welcome. I'm Nagin Singh. This is One India English. And today we have been joined in by Sukhdev Thurat. He is the ex-chairman of UGC, University Grant Commission. And you definitely know why we have been joined in with him because we have experienced something unprecedented which has happened uh, in terms of exams, the way UGC has conducted, and then the way it was cancelled. So first of all, I want to welcome Sukadev Thorat. He is the ex-chairman of UGC. And sir, welcome to the show. And we want to know more that what is really happening in India and what are your views about the current situation of higher education? You yourself have been a philanthropist. You have done a lot for Dalits of India, the Dalit students of India. We all know about that. We'll talk about it as well. But first of all, what is the current situation? How is the situation developing for the students who want to pursue higher studies? And of course, they look for job, JRF, and uh, they want to become professors, assistant professors. So how big a, a shock it is for the students of India? Well, uh, what has been happening in the last few uh, weeks is the is the sort of a failure of uh, centralized uh, examination for admission to the courses in medical uh, and net, that is uh, eligibility for the assistant professor in the university and the colleges. And also, I would like to add the centralization of the admission policy in 47 central universities. Now, if you compare what is happening during the last 10 years and earlier to that, the major change that has been brought is that earlier we had a decentralized system of uh, test whereby all India consideration were, were also taken into account. But the unique feature of what has happened during the last couple of years, after, particularly after declaration of new education policy 2020, is that there has been a centralization of admission policy and effort to bring the uniformity in examination, in questions. This is the first thing. Uh, thereby undermining the autonomy of the state and autonomy of the education institution. This is the first change. The second change is that uh, the the uh, the uh, 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 the outsourcing of the conducting of examination earlier the university grant commission would conduct for example the net examination through their own employees um, right. but the and the similar was there for the medical council but now it has been out, outsourced to the private parties under a certain moe uh, that is the first thing. And it has also been done, very new thing has been done is for the 47 central university, which were set up at different point of time. Each central university has their own admission policies and they have achieved certain strength. I think in my view, right. this uh, uh, doing away with decentralization and huge centralization and um, outsourcing with a sort of common question. Again, uh, the questions are objective nature. Uh, that has really created the problem. The chances of leakage, chances of taking opportunities, it has created. Uh, net examination, for example, which was conducted by UGC, it is conducted by their own employees. So there is a there is a pressure on the employee that if they commit any mistakes, on purpose or without purpose, they are accountable. They will lose their job. That is not the case today. So I think these are the 
problems of this uh, centralization of uh, uh, test. Now, it has number of consequences, of course. Leakage can happen in the earlier system also, but here the frequency happening of leakage on a massive scale uh, tells us that there is some inherent weaknesses in the system that has been created by the University Grant Commission and by the Ministry of Education. But this government, uh, especially Mr. Thurat, uh, we see that this government has uh, almost, you know, uh, put... Uh, people on contract or the workers on contract in almost uh, all sections. It is not just UGC or uh, the educational uh, you know, institutions, but we do see that uh, there has been privatization or uh, you know the employees are on contract basis, not uh, the permanent employees in government. Uh, this is something that government, uh, Modi government has tried in all departments. So this is this has happened in UGC as well, that, like we have contracted contractual employees working in UGC? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, I, it was not during my period, but I think the contractualization of the employees has happened all over the government offices. It's government offices, public sector undertaking, universities, teachers and all that. Um, and it has its own consequences. I come to that later, but I just want to tell you the one of the consequences of this national test is that uh, particularly if you take the example of the central university, 40 central uni 47 central university, the, mm -hmm. the, the tests are conducted by this agency. They also uh, have the cutoff point for the scheduled class and scheduled tribes. And then they have an online examination, even subject like Chinese language. And you, can, uh, you have limitation of doing this in language. As a result, it has affected this centralized admission policy through a private agency has affected two things. It has brought, uh, it has reduced the diversity of the students. Uh, mm -hmm. and, the, and the relatively better of stu students are coming. And the student from Schedule Pass, Schedule Tribe, and the lower income group, their admission has gone down. You, even if you look at the JNU admission policy, so it has affected the reservation uh, policy as such. So this is a... How, very... how, how has that happened? It's, it's a big thing that you're saying. If, you know... Uh, the OBCs or the Pichara work of our country, the Dalit, there are, there are, the, there Dalit, there are many the factors. Region. There are many factors we do not know. I think the private mm -hmm. agency is given the right to have a cutoff point for the schedule class. This should this job is of the of the university. The other thing is that the online education, uh, online test has has a differential impact for the different student. There are first generation student where JNU used to give a priority. Now the first generation student, they do not know uh, how to operate on the computer. There are many of them who are using the computer for the first time. And as a result of that, they mess up. Uh, for example, the government has, and UGC has brought out uh, the online uh, test without knowing. They are so terribly ignorant that if you take the percentage of the uh, student and the household having computer, and percentage of the student having internet in rural area, it is less than 15%, 20%. In right. urban area, there are a large number of the students who are poor, who have one single room, they don't have uh, connection, electricity goes. So without having a proper infrastructure available, uh, they have introduced this online test. And the poor are affected. The schedule cost schedule is affected. I think this yeah. is uh, after the 2020 policy. My, I think on the name of quality measures, the purpose seems to be to, uh, uh, the impact has been, it has affected the equal access to the scheduled class, scheduled tribe and the uh, lower income group. It seems to me that the intention is the same thing, that on the basis, but, on the protection of the quality, you reserve, you confine the education to the relatively elite section and a high class student. And this massification of the education that is going on on an SC, ST, OBC should be reduced and slowed down. So that is a very important consequences, which you had asked me that what is the additional point? This is the additional points. The equity mm -hmm. is the casualty of this. Now coming to your uh, contractualization of the teacher, I think this is also a very uh, detrimental thing. And is, in fact, I must tell you this issue has come when I was the chairman of UGC. At that time, mm -hmm. we, we, we discovered that most of the state has issued out an administrative decision whereby they have stopped the appointment of the teacher. By administrative decision, right. we allowed the teacher on contract, period-wise basis. And the government will give the money to the universities and the colleges for a contractual teacher. 
now you know teaching is a profession where the interaction between the student has to be there and if you are giving the uh, uh, teaching to the contractuality it obviously affect the affect the qualities but it also affect the reservation the moment you are uh, appoint a contract there is a reservation goes so yeah. there are there are the the detrimental impact or uh, of this contractualization are specifically for the scheduled caste and scheduled type obc in so far as contracts contractualization of takes away the reservation policy but overall we you know we speak of uh, net students need students so we spoke about uh, you know the marginalized students now what is the way further you uh, being ex you know chairman of net uh, what is your suggestion to these students because it's a big big disappointment uh, studying for so many years uh, wanting to do their research they want to become yeah, professors course, assistant professors See, what is your you know suggestion the way, to all these students the way out, the way out uh, way out is that you should the ministry should do away with centralization test the test should be done okay. by the state and uh and so it is it is relatively small level you are you are undertaking a state uh, test then the state should also give this job to the universities because universities also vary from uh, from uh, one place to the another place so the decentralization right. of test at the state level and the university level is important you take an example okay. for jn central university each central university has their own test Jawaharlal Nehru University will set up the paper for MA and MPhil and PhD, and uh, their their teacher will go into the sixty places. They will go to all the all the capital city of the state where to conduct the exam physically. They will also go to Kathmandu. They will also go to Dhaka, and they will also go to Colombo to bring the foreign student also. And then those who qualified, they are called for an interview, face to face interview. by the yes. jawarla university and they used to give the some concession and grade to the first generation learner student from backward district women of course scheduled caste mm-hmm. students they have the reservation as a result of that you know relatively marginalized group will get a get a admission and they will get best of the student you imagine jnu is only 50 year old now by when it was 30 year old it became a number one university in the country Yeah. because he has developed his admission policy his semester okay. system in the evaluation now what you are doing you are centralizing everything your admission policy and other thing so i think the first okay. suggestion would be that decentralize the test give it to the state give it to the university allow the university to con- uh, frame the question paper according to their requirement and uh, i think this will improve and conduct the test through the employees which are regular employees if they are mm-hmm. if you outsource then there is no stake you can take at the most some punishment later on but if by that time you have caused the harm the harm that has been faced by the student now but the government uh, you know they announced a day later that uh, the exams are cancelled i mean uh, they will reschedule the exams and then the case was given to cbi so what else do you expect from the government to do the government said that we have given the case to cbi the biggest thing done no, no, that so is how do you see the politics what, over it is different that is, that uh, is but the issue the cbi was enough will, done cbi what will happen is cbi will, will come on, uh, with the finding they will catch the uh, those who are involved they will be punished what is required is the improvement and reform in the structure the method of conducting examination uh, uh, capturing the guilty and punishing him doesn't help it will repeat again this this is the incident that has come out god knows how many incident must have happened which have not been discovered and students are affected uh, so but then the, the backbone of ugc you should, you should, ugc and is broken or what uh, the backbone is broken uh, the the yeah, system a, is not in place not of frustration not of frustration lot of frustration in fact the, the tamil nadu government and some government are asking you do away with the test give the admission on the basis of the higher secondary that 12 and all and in the state because they discover you know what has happened the student who got more mark and higher secondary but in the in the yeah. net examination they got less mark the reason mm-hmm. is the economically better of student go for a coaching and they get more mark and their higher secondary mark are low, lower than the marks of those who did not get yeah. the admission so the yeah. decentralization of the admission give them some freedom 
uh, to conduct the admission and the test that they want also allow this admission to be conducted by the university there should be some standardization whereby uh, the student get admission and in the centralized universities and centralized institution you know uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the IIT Delhi and IIT Bombay or all in of medical science want this student to be uh, give admission they have, they, they have their own test what is the problem but, but Mr. Yeah, Thawad, if I ask you if I ask you the if I ask you the five good things and the five worst things that have happened with India's higher education system. What what will be your just five good things, five bad things? And if you can, you know, keep it short, like single sentences, that will five, help us five, more because five, I have more five, questions. Five five good things that has happened before 2014. What mm -hmm. is the public education system? Setting up of university and colleges by the government and making the education accessible to the poor. Uh, right. Other thing is providing financial assistance to the poor section in terms of scholarship and free seat. Developing, developing, allowing a curriculum to be developed which is secular, which is scientific, uh, based on the principle in the constitutions. This is this is the third thing. The fourth thing is that this public education system with a lower cost has enabled the people from the uh, from the rural area and poor background to get admission. And the last thing is that because of the reservation policy for SC, ST, OBC, now the lower income group, they got the access, access to higher education, which was not there. The worst thing is privatization, opposite of the, the first point, the privatization of the school education and higher education. That has reduced the access. The second point is this privatization has become a profiteering business. And that has, second point is that has reduced the access of the poor and scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. Uh, in the in the in the in this educational institution, I have a figure. I won't go into the country. As on today, fifty percent of the universities are private. This this is a new animal yeah. that has there 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 were never private university. Sixty five percent of the colleges are self financing and private. Sixty five percent of the standalone institutions are private. So this privatization of education is almost killing the access of the poor and the scheduled caste and said tribe. About the quality, also there is a problem because the teachers are appointed on a contract basis, retired teachers, there is no accountability, there is no as much monitoring as possible except the NAC. As a result, we are not sure about the quality. They have focused only on professional education where there is a money. So uh, these are the problem. The, the, the culprits are the privatization, unequal access, affecting the uh, qualities and the, the reducing the physical access also. The government institutions are in the small, large villages, small town, medium town, and the private universities will go into only the large and metropolitan cities. As a result, the cost of education has increased. So I think, uh, and uh, and the, this contractualization of the education, as again the permanent teacher earlier, the contractualization mm -hmm. of education has brought an uncertainty among the teachers. Their desire to teach has been reduced, and the quality has affected. So I think higher education and school education is, in, I would say, is in crisis as a matter of fact. But if we ask you uh, that, how do you see it, you know, growing or, uh, you know, things getting better or worse, but in the next 10 years, what is the future for uh, students of India? I'm especially talking about uh, the Hindi belt of UP, Bihar, MP and Rajasthan where you know a massive number of students they try for uh, government jobs they try for to become assistant professor they will try to become IS officer they all try to become you know uh, doctors and engineers so what is the message or what how they should speculate because it is not just about uh, uh, getting into the colleges but uh, every student they, they, their families' dreams and so many lives are attached to uh, getting admission into one reputed college. So what is your message? message? What, how do you message, speculate things to move? Message is not for the student. Message is not for the students. Students and their families are very keen to have access to school and higher education. It is the problem of unequal and, the, uh, and bad quality education in many of the institutions is the issue. The government should... Uh, have a public school education system. As far as possible, they should bring an uniform uniformity in the public school. Uh, they have developed a caste system. There are as many uh, school uh, as many sectors are. 
So first thing that there should be as far as possible common school system that being taught in a regional language, English as one of the subject. Similarly, the colleges and the universities should be public. Government should mm -hmm. orgo this uh, excuse that we don't have money. Uh, they spend mm -hmm. millions of dollars, millions of rupees on the defense and others. And education, which is a basic need of the student, they do a, or, all kind of uh, excuses. So the how bad are we as a government? How as a government? How bad are we in financing our education system? Uh, the budget is very is, low. You know, the Kotari Commission has put up four percent for the school education, two for two percent for the higher education, six percent for higher education. It is about less than I think it is uh, zero point four or something. We are very very bad uh, in the higher education. See, there is also a last point which I will make that is the politics of education. The privatization has a politics of education in the sense those who are in power, they also own the private universities and private colleges. So they have a self-interest involved and therefore they won't oppose this policy when they are in the parliament or they are in the uh, Vidhan Sabha. So I think these are it's the messages that, uh, that the education should be made as public um, government. The entire Europe, the higher education and school education is under the state control. They were also poor in 50s and 60s. They didn't come with a excuse of the financing. The education yeah. being being a basic need should be should be by and large under, under the government control or public private partnership that is called government aided colleges. That's the best system that we have developed in the last 60 years. But now we have created a different animal: the private education mm -hmm. universities, private colleges. I think that should be uh, discouraged and stopped. Subscribe to One India channel and never miss an update.